All right, everybody, welcome back to the VWID Talk podcast, your home for electric cars and particularly for VWs and all things modifications. Uh, remember, you can catch us on your favorite podcasting platform, whether that's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Overdrive, and of course, on YouTube for the visual experience. And uh, remember to subscribe so you don't miss an episode, because today we've got a pretty exciting thing that Jan has figured out, um, which is Jan... So what we are talking about today is how we enable the metrics high beam functionality on our cars. Hmm, All right. Pretty exciting, huh? Yes, a lot of people are going to be happy to see this, and we are going to share this information with the world. Um, so yeah, the, we're going to talk first about how matrix headlights work, and then we will tell you specifically how to enable it and what coding is involved, and then how to use it. Um, so Jan figured this out by comparing the coding on a, a car with matrix headlights enabled to our US uh, spec ID4s, which do not have it enabled. Uh, so first of all, how it works um, is you can see there are two different styles of headlights. The, the car, the picture on the left there is an ID4 of a standard LED headlights. And you can see what the daytime running lights look like. That's the ones above it on the, uh, the little eyebrows, if you will. Um, yep. And then you can see on your right, you look like you've got an eyeball in there and the eyeball can move even on our U S cars. They'll move and follow you around corners. That is the hardware that allows you to have the dynamic high beam technology, which is called matrix, uh, by Volkswagen. Uh, um, and so yeah, what are we looking at here? Yeah. So, uh, maybe you remember that we have dissected the matrix high beam and if you haven't seen it we are linking it up there uh, so you can you can click and and check that out but mm -hmm. this is just an illustrative video how the matrix function works so when you look inside of the light there are number of segments a uh, number of leds for your low beam which is not important that's the mm -hmm. um this is the okay. orange bar down here but okay. what is important that there are 11 high beam leds so Today, when you're driving and turn on the high beams, you pretty much uh, turn on all these 11 segments at the same okay. time. And when you turn them off, you turn off all these 11 segments at the same time. Okay, so even if it's on auto, auto will either turn them all on or turn them all off. Turn them all off, yes. Okay. Now, with the metrics functionality enabled, imagine there is a car driving ahead of you. And so okay. what the metrics functionality can do, it would turn off those specific segments where the car is situated. The same yeah. applies to, a, let's say, a car that drives ahead of you, that it again turns off those segments so it doesn't blind the oncoming traffic. And okay. as the car move, moves, uh, the system tracks uh, where the car is and it kind of moves the blind spot, if you will, turns off those segments not to blind the uh, oncoming traffic or the traffic that is ahead of you. Right. It's really neat. Some of the people have probably seen the videos of this and it's really impressive, but seeing it in person is, is really, it, it kind of gives you the feels to see it. It's like, Oh, this is, this is really great, but it's nice not having to turn off your, your brights and have it and be able to see, particularly in a rural area where I live, it shows on the sides of the road. You can see the periphery if there's like deer or animals exactly. or some kind of emergency. So it's very useful. I think. I agree. Um, I agree. I, I I find it more impressive in rural areas than in the city because, of course, in the city there is a lot of uh, um, city lights, and it the right. um, the high beams won't turn on in the city as much uh, in more rural roads. So you would enjoy that, I'm sure, more on uh, rural roads. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. So how to enable them? Um, I'm going to cover the first part. This is. It said not not a, I said NA not applicable here because there's no mechanical changes to be made. There are no electrical changes to be made. It is 100% adaptation with software. Um, so we want to say first a big disclaimer: these changes are not endorsed. They have not been validated by Volkswagen. Uh, so proceed at your own risk and make sure you're following your state regulations. And you need to stay uh, in compliance with the federal regulations um, about motor vehicle headlights. And that said, it is legal as of 2022 to have adaptive high beam technology, matrix headlights, in your car. Thus far, Volkswagen has not certified their solution complies yet. That doesn't mean it doesn't. 
It doesn't mean it does. It means it's not certified and we just don't know. We, we don't have any idea if those changes would be um, accepted as they are in the US or not. So we are enabling them in this video as they, as they are enabled in Europe. So they'll work the same way they work in Europe. And if the EU thinks it's safe, it's probably safe. But be aware that might not meet eventual US regulations. So having said that, Jan, what is the... Uh... So let's take a look at how this change can be made and what changes uh, need to be made to activate the metrics um, high beams. Now, it depends on what version of your car is running. So if you have the version 3, and the best way to tell is that when you look at your infotainment, if you have these monochromatic style uh, tiles and you don't have backlit sliders for volume or temperature, then you're running software version 3. Uh, if you have a nice colorful icons on your screen and your sliders for volume and temperature are backlit, then you're running version 4 and higher, so 4 and 5. And to clarify just a little bit, the model year 2021, 2022, 2023, and first editions are all software 3. And model years 2024, the standard and S trims also use the older hardware and software. Those are software three. But the Pro and Pro S trims of 2024 ID4s are going to be the ones that use the newer software. But of course, you can just do what Jan said and look. And if you have beautiful, colorful icons, you know, then you've got software four. Volkswagen has strengthened some cybersecurity uh, protection uh, on the later software. So it's harder to obtain the online token to unlock these modules and make changes. So let's take a look at what are the options. So the option that we have tested that has been working is we have used uh, VCDS. That's how we uh, coded uh, Wes's car. Uh, and in order to unlock the two modules that we'll talking about next slide, we also had to use a third party uh, SFD uh, token service uh, that uh, allows you to unlock the modules specifically for your car. And you can uh, kind of facilitate the physical unlock with the VCDS once you um, provide VCDS the unlock token, then uh, it's uh, relatively, relatively easier and we link um, the down below details about how to how to do it. So VCDS, also known as Vacom from Rostec, that's one option. Uh, another popular DIY tool is OBD11. Uh, unfortunately, as of August 2025, uh, none of these changes are possible to be made with OBD11 because it um, requires accessing a module C002 that is not displayed, not accessible through OBD11. Uh, we, we are working with OBD11 uh, for many months, and this is definitely on their backlog. We don't know if and when this will be released. We also don't have any mm, news about if the uh, model year, the newer cars with uh, so-called uh, software 4 and 5 that require the online uh, SFD2 uh, unlock will be compatible in the future. But definitely check uh, the VWID talk link below. We'll be posting some updates as we learn about uh, new approaches. So these are the DIY uh, options. There is one, another option is the uh, so-called ODIS, which is the uh, off-board diagnostics system that your technicians in the dealers are using. If you're using ODIS to make these changes, VW records uh, who was the technician, uh, which shop made the change, and what changes were done in that specific vehicle. So then this change is fully traceable um, back by the Volkswagen. Another option is a service from, uh, for example, europrice.us. It's a paid service where they uh, mail you a, a dongle and through your computer they'll, they'll remotely connect and um, pro do the coding uh, for you. This has been validated by VWID talk members, uh, both on the older and newer vehicles. So this is definitely option for both. So check out the europrice.us for, for details and pricing. Uh, there might be more services, and we'll be updating the vwidtalk.com and that specific link that we posted here as we learn about uh, these updates. One last thing, keep in mind that all the changes that you make might be erased by a software update. So if Volkswagen ships 
a software update, you'll install that software update on your car, that it will very likely erase these settings. OK, so let's talk about what settings uh, need to be made. So you're uh, seeing that there are kind of two modules. Uh, and the first module has one, two adaptations. And I'll explain these. And then the last module has one adaptation. So even despite these two different modules are physically one hardware in your car, when you connect the diagnostic software, they show as two separate modules, two separate addresses. And you okay. have to unlock each individually. If you unlock the address 19, it doesn't unlock the address C002. Okay. All right. Um, so the, the CAN, CAN gateway, uh, there are two uh, adaptations. The first one is literally where you say that the adaptive uh, front uh, assist is using the metrics uh, functionality. So that's these are some acronyms of four German words. So that's we translate this as metrics. OK, turn okay. on metrics. Great. Then the second function here, it's really, really good because that will add a feature into your multimedia settings where you can enable or disable this metrics functionality. So if you, for some reason, for some time, don't want to use this functionality, you can disable it in your multimedia system. And then the, the high beams work as usual. They'll work manually. They won't work in automatic. Mode. Exactly. You, you have to turn them on or turn them off by hand. It won't. It won't automatically turn them all on and all off. Correct. So, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. And, and so you. That's if you unlock address nineteen, make those two adaptations. Then you unlock address C 2 and you make this smart matrix. Smart beam. matrix beam that is now set to halogen. And you can uh, change it to the smart metrics beam. There are multiple settings that have the metrics fun uh, matrix word in there. So make sure you set it to the to the right one. There are some potentially optional adaptations that you can also make, but these this, these are the minimum number of adaptations to make to okay. enable this functionality. It's really shockingly simple. Um, yes. And and I'd like to comment That's... that we you know one of the things that took us the longest time was that uh, we have read in a lot of different places that changing the parameterization files of the headlights and of other modules was required. At least in our experience, Jan has a non-first edition 2021, and I have a uh, 2023. Uh, made in Chanuga, made in here in the U.S. Right, so Jan's was made in Germany and mom was made in the U.S. And these three adaptations alone enabled full matrix functionality for both of us without doing any parameterization. And um, how did we figure out exactly which adaptations these are? Well, very simple. Uh, we have reviewed an ID3 in Europe. So I was in Europe uh, and we rented ID3. And these adaptations come from that very ID3. So I've just compared adaptations of the ID3 and my ID4. Um, I identified the differences and voila, here it is. Um, as I mentioned, there are some different optional adaptations that we'll discuss in the in on the forum because the lights have more modes, more features okay. um, beyond just um, the metrics headlights. But again, yeah. the, this is the minimal minimal adaptation. And you want to keep it basic and just show this is what turns up. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. All right. All right. So, so how to use? use Right. So when you enable that second feature in module 19 that Jan showed us, it adds this dynamic light assist button. So if you go to your vehicle settings and go at our headlights, now we have an option for dynamic light assist. You turn that on. And then when you're driving, you just push your left stalk forward, uh, which puts the high beams into auto mode. You see the, the icon there that shows that we're in automatic mode. And now instead of turning all the LEDs off, it will just turn off the high beam LEDs uh, that would be shining onto the car in front of you or to an oncoming car. Um, and it's really neat to watch. You can see the the U carved out for the car. And then when you pass them, it it, it comes back on. But uh, it's literally one button. Um, it's, and so that, yes, it's, yes, yes. It's literally one button. What, that's really great. I, and that second setting is what turns that button on there, right? Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I only want to say that if you, when you push the high beam stalk uh, uh, away from you, then... 
this um, white indicator shows up. But so what it means, it doesn't mean that the high beam will turn on. It means that the auto function is enabled so that if you do this in dark in a rural road, then your high beams most likely will come up. But if you do this in the city, typically nothing happens. And yeah. then when the car detects that there is um, no traffic that would be um, compromised by too much light uh, a around you, then it automatically turns on. Yeah. And I love the animation, Wes. Do, do you love the animation? How it when you turn of, it on, how it yeah, yeah. The, opens the beam as a curtain. comes on. It's yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Those little things make you feel special. <laughs> I know, I know exactly. I know exactly. So oh, I would enable it only for that, actually. <laughs> Well, it makes you feel special because you figured it out, right? I mean, that's why. So yeah. really great stuff, Jan. Man, thank you so much for doing all the hard work. I mean, getting software scans and comparing them is tedious and tough work. So kudos to you for uh, for getting that done. I mean, this is going to yeah. help a thank lot you. of people. Out. This, I, I hope so. I hope everybody enjoys it. Uh, so we talked about how it works, how to enable, how to use it. And if you want to read more nerdy information about high, about metrics and some other city function or highway function then the self service uh, program uh, sorry sorry self study program 739 from vw that talks about buzz describes all of this to very detail so check that out if you're interested okay a 73731 731 yeah okay and then 718 for the id4 so you can read a lot about it and see all about how it works but we will link we'll pin a link to the forum discussion on a vwid talk here uh where we'll have more details and other options you can enable uh, and we'll update things as we were able to test on a buzz and on uh sfd2 so the software 4 and 5 version id4s as well we'll keep keep updated on this so you guys can see more about it but uh yeah that's it it's pretty exciting stuff uh thank you all for joining us um thank you all for joining us please subscribe so you know what other crazy mod will do next time <laughs>